Good evening, good evening, everybody. Blitzball Champ is here with a brand new video here on the U. To the said tube. Tonight, gonna recap WWE Elimination Chamber. Um, first off, I want to say and recommend um, definitely check out uh, the Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, Broken Skull Sessions. Um, tonight's episode was um, featuring Sasha Banks, the boss. Really, really good episode. Um, definitely recommend checking this one out as she sits down with Stone Cold Steve Austin. So, um, highly recommend it. I actually watched it uh, with my dad after Elimination Chamber. Really, really good episode. So, definitely check that out. So, Elimination Chamber. Um, I'll say this. To open up, it wasn't great. It wasn't the worst. But I can't really say overall it was a pay-per-view that I was proud of. But it had some interesting things that happened. Okay? So... First, starting off, um, it had been released that um, Keith Lee, who was supposed to be in the triple threat match for the United States Championship, um, got pulled from this pay-per-view due to injury. Um, I don't know how serious this injury is, but um, it kept him out of, the, out of this pay-per-view. Um, it was supposed to be him, Matt Riddle, and Bobby Lashley, but he got pulled. So what they ended up doing is for the pre-show, they held a fatal four-way match to determine who would be Keith Lee's replacement in the triple threat match. And it involved Mustafa Ali, Ricochet, Elias, and John Morrison. Um, so this was the pre-show match. Ultimately, John Morrison capitalized on an opportunity and um, rolled up Mustafa Ali to get the victory. Um, pretty much, uh, Retribution assisted in powerbombing Ricochet into the uh, turnbuckle post or to, you know, outside of the ring. Um, but yeah, I mean... It was an alright match, I guess. I mean... But ultimately, John Morrison was able to get the victory. And therefore, the triple threat match ended up being Matt Riddle, John Morrison, and Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship later that night. Okay. Now we got going into uh, the main card, which the first match they had is the first of two Elimination Chamber matches. This was the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match, where the winner would go on to face Roman Reigns for the Universal title uh, later. So, let's uh, recap the competitors in this Elimination Chamber. We had Kevin Owens, we had Daniel Bryan, we had Sami Zayn, we had Jay Uso, we had Cesaro, and we had King Corbin. Now, um, of course, the first two that started off this match um, were Daniel Bryan and Cesaro. Um, go figure. But uh, the order in which uh, the folks entered in, you had... You had King Corbin, Kevin Owens, uh, Sami Zayn, and Jay Uso in the pods. So the order that came out, uh, you had King Corbin, you had um, Sami Zayn, you had Jay Uso, and you had uh, Kevin Owens. Well, actually, actually, Jay Uso was the last one to enter. So flip-flop flip that. 
Jay Uso was the last one to enter, so he was the freshest one. But um, I was really surprised that um, oh, forgot. I forgot to mention that um, Sami Zayn, when he came out before he got into the pod, he had his, of course, his documentary crew, and they ended up uh, the referee ended up kicking out the documentary crew to the back, and of course, Sami Zayn was pretty upset. He pitched a fit, so just had to throw that in there. But yeah, he pitched a fit. That was pretty funny. But um, anyway, back to the actual match. I was really surprised to see Baron Corbin as the first one eliminated. I did not think he would be the first one eliminated. Um, I just, I was surprised. I was really, really surprised. Um, but, you know, the action was all over the place. Um, there was even a time where uh, Sami Zayn pod was going to open and he you know kept the door closed you know tried his best to keep the door closed but of course he didn't make a mental note that it's you know two doors that open in the pod and forgot that the um forgot about the other one so of course he ended up getting pummeled uh by cesaro in the uh from the opposite side so i thought that was pretty funny but, um, and then not only that, but, um, or not only that, but tried to form a truce with Kevin Owens, you know, because we have to remember Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are a long time, good, good, close friends. You know, they've teamed up before, they've torn each other apart before, and he tried to form that truce with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens wasn't having that, so he just started lighting him up. I mean, he was tossing Sami Zayn all over the place and and just, you know, throwing him into the glass and all over the place. Um, but yeah, uh, it was just crazy. But I mean, that's to be expected in an Elimination Chamber match. And, you know, of course, when it come down to it, um, Sam Sami Zayn got eliminated by Kevin Owens. Uh, Jay Uso actually eliminated Kevin Owens in a very impressive fashion, um, locking Kevin Owens' arm in, in the Elimination Chamber door and just holding it there and then just super kicking the mess out of him. That was actually a pretty good spot. And then of course, uh, was able to get a Uso splash and actually, you know, Kevin Owens got eliminated. You know, I just, you know, I was really shocked at that. And then um, of course, Jay Uso also eliminated uh, Cesaro as well. And, you know, I was just really, I was really surprised to see, you know, Jay Uso eliminate two big names in Kevin Owens and Cesaro. Like, that's a pretty big deal. But, you know, I was starting to get kind of worried there because I didn't want Jay Uso to end up winning. And it's like, we got to go through this whole thing again uh, with Jay Uso and Roman Reigns. But at the end of the day, uh, Daniel Bryan was able to get the last elimination, eliminating Jay Uso, and there you have it. Daniel Bryan wins the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match to uh, be the number one contender to Roman Reigns' title. Now, during the match, uh, Daniel Bryan had uh, hurt his knee. He was pretty much, you know, showing, like, the knee injury and everything like that. So, sure enough, right after the match, Roman Reigns' music hits, and he comes out right then and there, ready to defend the SmackDown, or excuse me, the Universal Championship. So, pretty cheesy way of doing this. 
course, comes down. Daniel Bryan's still hurting. He's, you know, he just went through a whole Elimination Chamber match where he was one of the first of two competitors to start out the Elimination Chamber match. And, you know, Roman Reigns went to go give him a spear. Daniel Bryan reversed him, did put him in the yes lock, but, of course, Roman Reigns broke out of it, beat the mess out of him, and uh, ultimately was able to submit Daniel Bryan and the guillotine. He pretty much passed out. But, um, so yeah. And that was your Universal Championship match. So, honestly, that was a really, really cheesy way of having this match. And the, and the messed up thing about it is this pay-per-view ended early. It was like maybe... 9 30 ish when this pay-per-view ended so literally had 30 minutes left they could have easily had this universal championship match you know either before the final elimination chamber match or afterwards you know it just it really was a waste really was a waste i mean i understand you know roman reigns the, the monster heel he was going to win this match anyway but like that just really just cheapens it. Especially when you look at the time and how early this pay-per-view finished. I mean, it was already, everything was rushed to even book this pay-per-view. But, you know, when you have one of your main titles like that, I mean, it was already bad enough that they had to go through an elimination chamber, win that, and then they get, a, get the title shot later. But this ended up turning into right after the match. So it was just, it was a really cheesy way of doing that. And it just really felt like the waste of a, of a match on this card. You know what I mean? So Daniel Bryan won the Elimination Chamber match for SmackDown. But just being that he had to, he had his title match right afterwards was just, it was just really bad. It really just made it feel like a waste of a match. So, I don't know. That's my thoughts on that. But, yeah. But, anyway. Um, next up, you had the United States Championship. You had Matt Riddle and John Morrison and Bobby Lashley, the champ, in a triple threat match. Um... You know, this was this was a pretty pretty decent match. MVP came out, he was on a crutch. But um this was this match was alright, I guess. Um I really like seeing John Morrison and Matt Riddle working together in a match, or just working a match together. I think those two really go hand in hand well. So, I mean it it, it definitely made it work for this match. But um, it was really good. It was really, really good. I mean, I was very, I was very happy with the pacing of the match, and um, ultimately, and see, this is something to remember. A lot of folks don't keep in mind that triple threat matches are typically no disqualification but we don't always you know i know i forget occasionally i forget sometimes but you have to remember triple threat matches are, are usually no dq and matt riddle took advantage while bobby lashley had john morrison in the hurt lock you know, use the crutch to take out bobby lashley and, of course, you know, hit the floating bro on John Morrison because there was no way Lashley was going to eat that pin. And even though I didn't think Lashley would lose, I do agree with the fact that he didn't take the pin. But sure enough, Matt Riddle is now your WWE United States Champion. And... I figured it was bound to eventually happen, just maybe not now, 
But, I mean, like I said, you keep Bobby Lashley strong, and he didn't eat the pin. You know, John Morrison did. So, I mean, I think the way that that ended makes sense. If they were going to put the title on Riddle, this this was a fair, legit way to do it. So, but yeah, um, Matt Riddle wins his first singles title in the uh, WWE. Um, of course, we know he's a former NXT Tag Team Champion, which he um, won with uh, Pete Dunne, which, you know, he later um, turned into Matt Riddle, Timothy Thatcher. But... But yeah, I mean, this was a this was a big bit win for Matt Riddle, and it'll be interesting to see what kind of um, title run he has, especially with Fastlane coming up and then WrestleMania. I mean, this could be pretty big for Matt Riddle, so we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. We also had the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match. Which I felt like this was the replacement over Asuka defending the Raw Women's title, which was originally supposed to happen and her defending it against Lacey Evans, but because Lacey Evans announced that she's pregnant, she can't compete now. So you know Lacey Evans is going to be out and thought maybe they would get Asuka a replacement, but that didn't happen. So... I guess you could say they pretty much went with this as a replacement. So, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, the women's tag champions, defended against the SmackDown women's champion Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair, this year's uh, Royal Rumble winner for the women. Um, had a feeling this was this match was going to happen at some point. Um, Reginald pretty much costed Sasha and Bianca the match. Um, he tossed in the, the wine bottle, or champagne bottle, and um, wanted Sasha to use it, but she didn't, and she paid for it. Um, she took a Annihilator from, from Naya, and uh, yeah, that was the one, two, three. But uh, I was thinking that maybe Bianca was going to attack, um, was going to attack Sasha afterwards, and um, but that didn't happen. I was thinking she was going to attack Sasha afterwards and declare Sasha as her WrestleMania op opponent, which... Reminds me, I need to backtrack for a second, because there was a key piece that I forgot to mention. Speaking of opponents, after Roman Reigns destroyed, well, maybe not necessarily destroyed, because, I mean, Daniel Bryan was already out of it. After he quickly made quick work of Daniel Bryan, Edge comes out and spears Roman Reigns, points to the WrestleMania logo and fireworks, pyro. And with that being said and done, it looks like it is confirmed that Edge has picked Roman Reigns for his opponent at WrestleMania. That's pretty much the confirmation. So, Edge versus Roman Reigns. There you go. Um, continuing on back to the women's tag team title match. Like I said, I really was thinking that... Uh, Bianca maybe was going to attack Sasha and declare her as her WrestleMania opponent, but that didn't happen, and we're still not sure if Bianca is going to pick Sasha or Asuka. So, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. But um, you know, Nia and Shanna walked away with the titles, and you know, even though Sasha and Bianca work really well together as a tag team. Um, which they put on a they put on a good match. This this was a pretty good match. It wasn't too long, but it was it was a pretty good match. Um, but yeah, I just figured out at one point I figured that this match was going to happen at some point, and it did. So now that they got that out of the way, 
there can be more concentration on on Bianca and and her opponent for WrestleMania, which I think is going to end up being Sasha, but who knows? I mean, either way, it's not like she's faced Asuka or Sasha in a one-on-one match yet. So, I mean, you know, that's something to keep an eye out. But we'll see. We'll definitely see. Um, There were a few back stage segments as well you know interaction with the miz and bad bunny um you also had a a chat between the miz and mvp it's like something was was brewing there so um yeah they caught that and of course the the main event was the raw elimination chamber match where drew mcintyre actually defended the WWE Championship in this match itself. So, um, the competitors you had, you had, um, of course, Drew McIntyre, the champion. You had Kofi Kingston. You had Sheamus. You had Jeff Hardy. You had Randy Orton. You had AJ Styles. Um, so, to start off, uh, the first two people to start off ended up being Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. And there was a really, really funny part when Randy Orton made his entrance and Kofi Kingston was was talking about how big his quads were from inside the the um chamber pod. That was just really, really hilarious. But um But yeah, I just thought that thought that was so funny. But okay. Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton started out and course the the third person to enter into the match was drew mcintyre it was drew mcintyre then um then kofi kingston then aj styles and then of course sheamus was the last to enter being that he was he won the advantage match on raw um and the thing that's funny about this is when aj came in he didn't wait until it was his turn to come in, technically. Uh, almost opened the door to open the plexiglass door to, to one of the pod pod doors AJ was in uh, to get him out. And he was trying to do that to take advantage from the fact that um, Randy Orton RKO'd Kofi Kingston and Jeff Hardy and this happened actually after Kofi Kingston eliminated Randy Orton. So yeah, Randy Orton was the first one eliminated in this match, which was a big shocker. But you know something? I was happy that it was Kofi that did it because I felt like that was long overdue. Based on their history, that was long overdue. So I got to give WWE kudos for doing that. Kofi eliminating Randy Orton in this Elimination Chamber match and him being the first eliminated. You know, I, I, I really give WWE kudos for that. But, of course, right afterwards, he ate an RKO. Jeff Hardy ate an RKO. Um, AJ Styles tried to sneak in and get a quick pin on both, which, you know, they ended up kicking out. But, um, yeah, it was just really, really crazy how that went down. But um, he had some really great moments there. And um, when it comes down to it, Sheamus, I mean, of course, Sheamus was looking to go right at Drew McIntyre when he came in. And, you know, Drew was taking a beating throughout the whole match. But, you know, still being able to hold his own. But uh, when it came down to it, you know, Sheamus was able to eliminate Kofi, was able to eliminate um, Jeff Hardy. Um, well, actually, Jeff Hardy got eliminated by Drew McIntyre. Correction. 
Drew McIntyre eliminated Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy nailed uh, AJ Styles with the swan time. And then as soon as he hit that, ate a Claymore <laughs> from Drew McIntyre. And then uh, when it came down to Drew, Sheamus, and AJ, of course, AJ was able to uh, get the phenomenal forearm and take out Sheamus after Sheamus took out Drew McIntyre with a bro kick. But um, AJ pinned Sheamus, and it came down to AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre. And, um, of course, AJ Styles attempted another phenomenal forearm, but eight, which I totally called, but eight, a Claymore in midair of that phenomenal forearm. So, well done. And, of course, Drew gets the pin and is the last one. And, um, you know, so Drew successfully defended the title in the Elimination Chamber and retained. But out comes Bobby Lashley, and he just starts beating the mess out of Drew McIntyre. I mean, just throwing him in the stuff and just pummeling him, just destroying him. Got him in the, and hooked in the, in the hurt lock and everything. And then out comes The Miz, Mr. Money in the Bank. He goes in to cash in his Money in the Bank contract. He kicks him, hits him with a DDT. Drew kicks out with every little last breath of energy he had left. And then he ate a skull-crushing finale. And Miz gets the one, two, three, and is your new WWE champion. So, when it was all said and done, it was only a matter of time before Miz would finally cash it, cash in the Money in the Bank contract. Now, this was interesting, considering MVP and The Miz seem like they made a deal backstage. Therefore, you see Lashley destroy Drew McIntyre. The Miz come in, picks up the leftovers, wins the title with the money in the bank. So, it really makes me wonder, could we perhaps get maybe Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania? Or maybe at Fastlane. Who knows? Maybe, maybe at Fastlane or WrestleMania. Don't know. But it'll be interesting to see who The Miz will end up facing at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. Now that we pretty much know Edge picked Roman Reigns. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see what happens with that. But it was literally still like 9.30, 9.35 when this pay-per-view went off air. Like, that ended pretty early. You know, it was about maybe 8.40-something when this match, this main event started. You know, and that's why they could have easily had one to two more matches, like I said, with Smack the Universal Championship could have been a, a full match. But they didn't do that. And it just, I felt like it was just a waste of a match. It was a waste of a match. You know, and it just, it kind of cheapens the pay-per-view because it's one of your other main titles so yeah overall i mean this this pay-per-view definitely didn't scratch the surface compared to nxt takeover vengeance day but i mean really the main thing that stuck out to me was the you know the miz cash in at the end i mean that was you know that was a big deal um, Matt Riddle winning was nice as well, but it made sense how it was done. I mean, Lashley didn't eat the pin. John Morrison did. So it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. But, um, I mean, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, 
I really feel like this pay-per-view was rushed. As far as, you know, throwing matches together to put stuff on the card. And it really, it, it yielded results. And I just felt like that's what happens when you rush things. And you don't really do a good job of building up. Because they did not do a good job of building up uh, for this pay-per-view. At all. They did a terrible job building up for this pay-per-view. And it showed. So, just... Honestly... I can't say this was a pay-per-view I enjoyed. Not like TakeOver Vengeance Day. But, I mean, some key things did happen. So, that's something to keep in mind. But, uh, so we got one more pay-per-view before WrestleMania, which is Fastlane, which is March 21st. They uh, announced Fastlane. So, I mean, they got a lot of work to do. And uh, that's four weeks from today. So... I have to see what happens. I want to see if they give Asuka a storyline, finally. And, you know, what what are they going to do with Charlotte? Because, I mean, Lacey's going to be gone. You know, she's going to be gone because, you know... And, and she might still... Maybe she'll still be on camera. But she's not going to be able to wrestle. She's pregnant. She's not going to be able to wrestle. So, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. I really hope Asuka gets a storyline, you know, as she, it gets closer and closer to WrestleMania. Um, you know, are we going to learn about who Bianca's choice will be between now and Fastlane? I really feel like between now and Fastlane is, is, when, is when we'll finally get that answer. But we'll see. We'll see, because it's not really that big of a gap between Fastlane and uh, WrestleMania. So, something to keep in mind. And, of course, it was already announced, I believe, that WrestleMania is going to be two nights. So, they got some work to do. They got some work to do. But uh, we'll see what happens with uh, Fastlane. But hopefully it'll turn out to be better than Elimination Chamber. Just... You know, other than the title, than the two title changes, that was really it. You know, although I was happy that Kevin Owens didn't win the Elimination Chamber. And, you know, Drew at least won and retained, and then he lost to The Miz. But still, I was happy that Shayna and Nia retained, because it makes no sense right now to have Bianca and Sasha as tag team champions. Because I do think Raquel and Dakota will win from Shayna and Nia. But, but yeah, that's pretty much all that I have. I mean, I didn't have a lot of ex high expectations for this pay-per-view. So, I mean, I just took it for what it was. But, anyway, what did y'all think about Elimination Chamber? Did y'all like it? Did y'all hate it? Let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And thank you for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. I will see y'all soon. Hope everybody has a blessed week. Laters.